Hey guys, before we get to the video, for more tips and tricks in the heating and air industry, please click that subscribe button. Thank you. Hey guys, Joshua Griffin here, serving the Middle Peninsula and the Northern Neck of Virginia, and wanted to do a video, it might be a little controversial. I feel like out there in our industry, there's probably more conflicting information about this one topic out there than just about anything else. And that is because we are starting to see a transition, starting to see a change in our industry, and obviously new technology comes out and things like that. And there's, you know, there's always going to be some pushback against stuff and things like that. So I wanted to do this video. We're going to go through the pros and cons of where the industry is going with inverter systems, communicating technology and such like that. But the main reason I wanted to do it is because I've had some comments on our videos and I actually, when we're looking at jobs every day, we're up against other opinions and, and at times misinformation. And so one of the things I hear a lot when we first start talking about inverter technology and the pricing and things like that is folks like to talk about you know, is the, is the saving significant enough for you to pay all this extra money for a more efficient system? The answer to that question is every house is different and it depends on your situation. In our area, there's people that have vacation homes and things like that. And if you're not there during the winter time, you're only there for a few months of the year or whatever, you're not going to be there enough to see the mileage to get, you know, the savings that you need to get your money out of it. So if you're, you know, if you're looking at that, that obviously would play a role in that. But if we're talking about your primary home, we're looking at, you know, a, a system that does the majority of your heating and cooling in your home. Uh, there's, you know, I call them old timers, but there's even younger guys that still have this old school mentality. And they'll say things like that. You're not going to get enough savings for you to for it to make sense for you to do an inverter system or to install a higher sear system, right? I just, from my experience, that's just simply not true. I can tell you for me personally, I had a 12 sear package unit on my house when I bought it. And a couple years later, we installed a split system. So we went from a package unit outside that was exposed to the elements and we went up and sear and we brought the air handler in. So we, so we did a split system where there's an air handler inside and the outdoor unit is still outside. And we've seen a significant savings. Again, every house is different, but at our house, you know, we're, we've actually saved several hundred dollars. Uh, there were winter months with that package unit that we were seeing electric bills almost $600. And now I, we have not received a bill over $300 since we installed that system. Was that the case every month that we were seeing $600 power bills? No, but even if you're only seeing a hundred dollar savings every month with your inverter system, then if you do the math, you know, an inverter system, and it's going to be $2,000 higher than say a, a single stage or a multi-stage system then if you're saving $100 a month, within two years, you're gonna be in the black, right? You know, what if there's a $5,000 difference? You know, I've, I've heard guys say, you know, you're not gonna see the savings. And what if there's a $5,000 difference? Well, you know, do the math in just over four years, you're actually gonna be saving more money on that system than you would have with a standard system. So obviously it makes a difference on whether or not you're gonna be using the system a lot, if it's a second home or just a system that you don't use a lot, maybe it's in a part of the house that you rarely turn on anyway, then you know maybe it doesn't make sense to spend that extra money. Here's another thing, if you're planning on selling the house soon, so in two years you're planning on selling the house, then maybe you wouldn't see enough savings for it to make sense for you to put a 20 sear system in there. So I hear all the time in our industry, guys will say, well, you know, it just doesn't make sense. It's too expensive. They'll never see the savings. In my experience, that's just simply not true. If, if you have a technician telling you that or a contractor telling you that, maybe, just maybe, they're trying to tell you that because they haven't installed enough inverter systems to know better. And maybe you should get a second opinion from a company that has installed several of them and they still may shoot you straight. They may say, you know, yeah, we install inverter systems, but you know, you're just 
for your particular situation, it makes more sense to do, you know, this or that, right? So, you know, getting multiple opinions. Uh, but, you know, if you got that old school mentality, if you're hearing, you know, it just doesn't make sense, uh, it chances are uh, you got somebody that, that just hasn't installed enough of them to know better in my experience. I get people all the time commenting on my videos, telling me what I'm wrong about, and I'm sure somebody will tell me I'm wrong on that, uh, but I can tell you from personal experience and you know, in business experience that the inverter systems are worth what you spend the extra money on. Another argument that I'll hear from some of those guys is the parts are a lot higher, and I have to agree with that. Uh, as time has gone on, we have seen a humongous shift in our industry where things like fan motors, when I first started in the industry, you know, you could carry four different motors on your service van and you could pretty much get anybody rolling in the middle of the night uh, with just about any situation, just about we could get them rolling with those four motors. Two outdoor motors with two different RPM speeds and two indoor motors with two different voltages and you know multi-taps and stuff like that so i could do a rescue motor and get those folks back on those days are starting to end they haven't completely ended but they're well on their way so now when you look at things like variable speed motors you know some of these manufacturers are charging five six seven eight hundred dollars for just the motor. So are we seeing a significant price increase across the board for parts and things like that? Yes. But I would argue when we're talking about inverter systems, if they're installed properly, they actually have less wear and tear and fewer breakdowns in my experience. Now, if somebody else tells you something different and that's not true in their experience, then that's their experience. But in my experience, we install these inverter systems and years will go by before I hear from those folks again. Uh, you know, if they're, especially if they're doing a proper maintenance to their system and things like that, uh, that's the only time we see them after that. So let's talk real quick you know, I'm going to get into more pros and cons, but let's talk real quick why I think that is. Why are we seeing less wear and tear on an inverter system versus a single stage system? Well, to make a really long, complicated subject, I'm just going to give you the short version. And that is, imagine if here, up here is the top operating speed of your heating and air system, and then down here is the bottom. Well, if you have a single stage system, it's either off or it's on, okay? So you're just seeing this constant, you know, when it comes on, it jumps all the way up here. When it goes off, it falls all the way back down. And multi-stage systems, you know, there will be like a 65 or 70% stage. Sometimes there's several stages and then there's the top, right? And the, the idea is, you know, you're still, you know, jumping up to there or jumping all the way up to here, whatever stage that it jumps to, you're seeing that, you know, still it's a spike in energy that there's capacitors and things like that to help the system get up and going. But that is, I, that is where you see a lot of your energy consumption, that spike in energy when it first comes on. With inverter systems, there's, you know, there's off and then there's on and there's a lot of in between. Okay, so there's going to be times, especially like on a mild day, on a mild day with your heating and air system with a single stage, it's still off or on, you know, but with an inverter system, that thing might be just barely running and it's keeping your house comfortable. Okay, sorry if you hear my dogs in the background. So obviously that is part of the reason it saves energy, but I in my experience, have found that that's also part of the reason that we're seeing less wear and tear on the system. You know, when it's having to go, uh, 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 you know, that's a lot on that system at times, right? But with that inverter system, imagine it's just barely going down the road. Uh, you know, if you're driving a car and you're only going through a 25 mile an hour speed versus a car that goes 100 miles an hour, but then comes to a screeching halt and then goes up to 100 miles an hour again and comes to a screeching halt. So that's kind of the analogy, I would say. We're even seeing some companies come out with inverter systems and higher seer systems, and they're putting lifetime warranties on their equipment, lifetime warranties on the compressor, lifetime warranties on this or that. 
they wouldn't be doing that if they thought that they were going to have tons of breakdowns and things like that. So the other thing I'll say is if you have somebody that has, you know, had a lot of issues with this or that, maybe it's the install. Uh, in fact, I would argue that most times it is the install. Whoever installed it, they, you know, cut some corners or they didn't do something correct. And that's why you're having issues. The, the couple issues that we have had uh, with the inverter systems that we're installing have always been just tweaking something here or there, updating the firmware on the thermostat or, you know, changing a dip switch on a unit, things like that. Uh, but we don't see significant, huge, we, we have not replaced an inverter compressor in these higher SEER systems. Now I've seen some replace in ductless units, but that's a different story. Another argument that I've heard recently is folks are saying, something to the effect of, well, they haven't perfected the technology. And I guess I would probably agree with that. But in my mind, saying that they haven't perfected the technology, it doesn't give it a pass. It doesn't mean you need to fully avoid that technology. Uh, it's like saying, well, the internet, they're perfecting the internet right now, so you probably shouldn't use the internet. Well, you know, they probably are perfecting it. You know, they're changing things. Websites are being built, whatever. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's still a great technology, right? So that would be my argument to that. Anyone that says that they're perfecting the technology and so they wouldn't install any of those systems, again, in my experience, they probably have just not installed enough of them to know better. So real quick, they're a higher seer and obviously they're more efficient. The other thing I'll tell you about an inverter system is, you know, when they're comparing apples to apples with these systems, I did a whole video about why they're gonna do away with SEER because they're having to compare these systems apples to apples when they're fully running. But with inverter systems, they're not running at full speed all the time. So there's times where, again, it's just barely running and it's saving you money. So they're high efficient, they're less expensive than geothermal systems. Uh, if you say that about geothermal, I would maybe agree with you. If you said, hey, the money that you're gonna save over the years, you're not gonna get enough mileage out of it for you to make sense for you to install a geothermal system, I would maybe agree with that. You know, again, every house is different and that may be true. But when we're talking about just going up from, say, a 14, 16 single stage system up to, say, an 18 or 20 seer inverter system, not the same thing. You're going to see quite a bit of savings there. Another pro to inverter systems is, in general, they're better at humidity. So if we're talking about those inverter systems and their communicating technology and their variable speed fan motor, those systems are barely running at times and they're still removing humidity from your home. So they do a better job of removing humidity. In fact, a lot of ductless units, which, oh, by the way, most ductless units are inverter technology. Uh, when we're talking about ductless units, a lot of them have that dehumidify mode. They might call it something different, different verbiage, but in general, it's, you know, a lot of them will have like a little raindrop or something like that on the remote. You put it in that mode and it's dehumidifying your home. The last thing I'll say as far as pros is just making sure that you're finding a good company, somebody that's installed them, somebody that has a manufacturer behind them with some good infrastructure. Um, a lot of the horror stories that I hear are people saying, well, you know, my contractor won't call me back now. I've called the manufacturer. I'm having these issues, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, that sounds like a nightmare, obviously. Of course, you could have that with a single stage system too. But when we're talking about inverter systems with communicating technology, it's not as simple as just getting the refrigerant right or something like that you would have with a single stage system. Uh, there could be lots of different things. There are more bells and whistles and you're trying to get all that straight for the system to run tip top. So let's talk about the cons. Obviously, I'm a fan of what we're installing. I would even go so far as to say we sold more inverter systems last year than anything else. And so obviously I'm a fan, but let's talk about a couple cons, a couple bad, right? If we're talking about the good and the bad, let's talk a couple bad things. Well, one thing is your options on thermostats are limited. So if you are a fan of a particular type of thermostat, we have homeowners all the time that'll say, well, you know, I, I want this particular thermostat. I had it in my house or I like it or whatever the reason is. 
uh, when you're talking about communicating technology, your options are limited. In fact, with some manufacturers, you only have one or two options. So if you have a high sear system, you have to install their communicating thermostat and that does limit your options a little bit. I would say that if that's a concern of yours, get your contractor to put that thermostat in your hand before you buy it. Uh, we've done that before. If we've got somebody on the ropes or they're thinking about this or that or whatever, and they want to hold the thermostat, see what it was going to look like on their wall and so on, we can do that. And then the other con that I would say is there are more bells and whistles on the systems. And a lot of these old timers, when they're using this old school mentality, the one thing that I would maybe agree with them on is there are more bells and whistles, technically more things that can go wrong. And it's sort of like if you're comparing a high efficiency furnace, like a 95% furnace to an 80% furnace, there's more bells and whistles. There's more things that can go wrong. There are pressure switches that maybe the 80% furnace doesn't have or whatever. There's more bells and whistles there. So in general, I would agree with that. Now, again, I would go right back to what I was saying before is there's less wear and tear on the system. So even if you have to end up replacing a sensor or a switch or something like that, you're in a lot of cases you're not replacing big components like the compressor or even the coils because the coils are getting less abuse too that's the thing the pressures are not when you're going from a single stage system when it's running way up here all the time that coil is experiencing a lot of high pressures a lot of abuse i would say right that they're not seeing with an inverter system in a lot of cases so just to wrap up Sorry this video was so long, but if you are in the market for a new heating and air system, definitely talk to a couple different folks. You know, if you've got somebody telling you some of the things that I just said, oh, they haven't perfected the technology, or you're never going to save enough money for it to make sense, or whatever, in my experience, those things are just simply not true. Get a few opinions, talk to a few different contractors, compare apples to apples, and make a decision that makes most sense for you. In my experience, I would say overall, when folks are trying to decide what brand they should install or what sear rating or all that stuff, I would say in the long run, you're not focusing on the right thing. In the grand scheme of things, it just doesn't as matter as much as it does on who you pick to install it. So I would say find a good contractor, someone with good reviews, someone that cares, someone that's going to talk to you and somebody that can tell you why they're selling you what they're selling. If someone asks me, hey, why do you sell what you sell? I can tell them exactly why I sell what I sell. In my market, I sell what I sell because it's the best at this and that, right? But, you know, not every market's the same. Don't ask me what brand you should install because... Again, you're focused on the wrong thing. The last thing I'll say is if you're in the market for a new heating and air system and you're in Virginia in the Middle Peninsula or the Northern Neck, give Griffin Air a call. We'll give you a free estimate and the best warranty in the area. But if you're not in our coverage area, check out my new website. I've even got a little banner up here, newhvacguide.com. Check out that site because we've put so much information on there. It's as if I wrote a book telling folks, hey, here's the good and the bad, avoid this or that. I've even got a whole page called no-nos, things to stay away from. And so before you spend thousands, check out that website. And finally, for more tips and tricks in the heating and air industry, click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.